Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a first person controller. I'm going to be showing you how we can make a first person movement system with camera movement, player movement, jumping, drag handling and more. So stay tuned. As you can see all I've got in this project is a main camera, a directional light and a ground game object. And this ground game object has a grid material which can be found in the grid box prototype materials package which can be found in the package manager and what we're going to do we need to set up our player a little bit different to the way we'd set up a 2d player we need a few game objects for this so what i'm going to do i'm going to start off with an empty game object and we're just going to call this player and we're going to create a bunch of child game objects underneath this player which can all be controlled from this top game object so for a start on this player game object we're just going to give it a rigid body as we want this to be controlled by physics so from here i'm going to right click on our player i'm going to go down to 3d objects and I'm going to press capsule. Now we can call this player capsule. I'm going to go back up to our player here and I'm just going to zero this out on all transforms. And now we can actually see him in our game view here. This is going to be our player game object. Now if we head back up to our player game object at the top here, what we want to do is we want to go to our component rigid body, go to constraints and we want to lock the rotation on the X, Y and Z. We do not want to rotate this rigid body. We're going to be rotating other components. From here, we're going to click on our player capsule. We're going to right click and create another empty child and we're just gonna call this orientation. This is so we know where the forward transform is and we know what direction our player is currently facing. And finally, I'm gonna right click on our orientation. I'm gonna go down to 3D object and I'm gonna go down to cube. Now we can call this cam pause, meaning camera position. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scale this down a little bit and I'm just gonna move this forward like so. We know what direction we are facing based on this cube, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this box collider here and I'm gonna disable the mesh renderer. This is purely for debugging purposes. This actual cam pause is going to be used later in the video when we set our camera position. This is the position that we want our camera to be in at all times. And in fact, I'm going to move this just a little bit further forward so it doesn't clip into the player here. But we can always fine tune this later down the line. Now what we're going to do is we are going to set up our camera components. So all I'm going to do for now, I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to call this cam holder. I'm going to zero out this on all transforms. And finally, I'm just going to drag our main camera put it on our cam holder and then zero out the transform for this as well. And this is our component set up. Now we need to do some scripting. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go onto our main camera. I'm gonna hit add component and I'm gonna type in cam movement. Now I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio. So before we do anything, we're gonna lock the cursor so we can't see the mouse when we are playing. So we're gonna go into our start function and we're just gonna type in cursor.lockState equals cursor lock mode Dot locked. And then underneath that, we're just going to set the cursor dot visible and we're going to set that to false so we can't even see it. Now that that's out of the way, we need to make some variables. So we're going to make two floats for sensitivity. So we're going to do public float sense y and public float sense x. So this is so we can handle the sensitivity of the mouse directly in the editor. And then you could use this in the settings of your game, for example. Now we need to find a reference to that transform orientation game object we made earlier. So we're going to type in public transform orientation. And finally, we need two floats to handle our rotation on the X and Y axes. So I'm just going to type in float X rotation and float Y rotation. Now we're going to assign these two floats to the input of our mouse movement on the X and Y axes. Now I'm gonna make another two variables in the update function. So I'm gonna type in float mouse X. And we're gonna set this to our input dot get axis raw because we want the movement to be sharp when we're rotating the camera. I'm gonna assign this to the mouse X. So it needs to be spelled exactly like that because that is how Unity handles our X movement for the mouse. We are then gonna multiply this by time dot delta time, so it is not frame dependent. And finally, we're gonna multiply this by our sense x value so it can be controlled in the editor. And we're gonna do the exact same for the y, except instead of x, we put y. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reference the x and y rotation we made at the top. So I'm gonna type in y rot, y rotation, and then I'm gonna do plus equals mouse x. And underneath that, I'm gonna do x rotation minus equals mouse y. Now this does seem a little bit confusing, but essentially the reason we do this is so anytime that the mouse moves, we wanna add these values to the current rotation. This is just one of the best ways for Unity to handle camera movement, even if it doesn't make too much sense on the surface. Now underneath this, we are gonna clamp our X rotation 
to 180 degrees so we can't rotate fully only up and down and it is limited so i'm going to type in mathf dot clamp x rotation and i'm going to clamp this between minus 90 and 90. now that we've set up everything all we need to do is actually set the rotation of our transform and the rotation of our orientation game object so what i'm going to do is transform dot rotation and i'm going to set the rotation to quaternion dot euler and this function just returns a rotation and we're going to pass in a vector three here which is going to be our x rotation our y rotation and then nothing on the z and finally we're going to reference our orientation game object here we're going to reference the rotation of it and we're going to set it to quaternion dot euler zero on the x y rotation on the y and zero on the z and that is just about done for our camera movement now back in the editor if i hit on our main camera now you can see I've got a sensitivity Y and a sensitivity X public variable, which we can control in the editor. And I'm gonna set these both to something like 300. And for orientation, we can simply drag in our orientation game object right here. Now our camera script knows what our orientation game object is. Therefore it knows what direction the player is facing. Now that we've got our camera movement set up and out the way, there is one small script we need to add to our camera holder before we go on to movement. So I'm gonna go onto our cam holder here. I'm going to click add component and I'm going to type in cam holder. I'm going to double click to open this in Visual Studio and I'm going to make one public variable referencing our camera position. And in our update function, I'm just going to make sure that on every frame the game is playing, we're going to set the position of our camera equal to the camera position that we set earlier. Back in the editor, go onto our cam holder and drag our campos game object right into this slot here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna to go to our main camera here. I'm gonna set the field of view up to 70 because that is just how I prefer it. Now, if we hit play, you can see we actually do have some movement here. And we can adjust the sensitivity of the X and Y to fit our needs. But obviously we can't move and that is what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna click on our player here. We're gonna press add component and we're just gonna type in movement. I'm gonna press new script and then create an add. And then we can open this up in Visual Studio. So what we need to do at the start is we need to make some variables. So I'm gonna make a reference to our rigid body. So I'm gonna go private rigid body RB. I'm gonna make a private vector free. I'm gonna call it move. I'm gonna make a public float for our speed so we can handle this in the inspector. And another one for jump. I'm then gonna reference our orientation. So public transform orientation. And finally, I'm gonna make two private floats for our vertical and our horizontal. Now, before we do anything, I'm gonna make a new awake function. So I'm gonna type in void awake, and I'm just gonna reference our rigid body to the rigid body in the inspector. So I'm gonna do RB equals get component rigid body. And don't forget these two curly brackets here. They can be often left out, and this will be the bane of your life for a very long time if you forget it. <laughs> now in the update function, we need to set our horizontal and vertical to the input of our horizontal and vertical axes, such as WASD, arrow keys, etc. So I'm going to type in horizontal is equal to our input dot get axis raw as you want the movement to be sharp and I'm going to type in horizontal and then I will do the same for the vertical. And now with these two floats set to our input, we need to set our move vector. So I'm going to type in move and we are going to set this to our orientation transform. So we're going to set this to the orientation dot right. We are going to multiply this by our horizontal axes and now we are going to add that to our orientation dot forward and we're going to multiply that by our vertical. So this might seem a little bit confusing but it's actually relatively simple when you think about it. So this orientation game object, the reason we set this up is so we could see the direction that the player is facing in. So if we reference the right of this game object, that means the right direction of the player, this needs to be multiplied by our horizontal because horizontal is our left and right movement. And now the forward orientation needs to be multiplied by our vertical because that is going forwards and backwards. So now if we were to combine these and press W and D at the same time, for example, we would go at a diagonal angle. But if we was just to press W, we would just go forward. And this goes for every direction. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. But that is actually not enough to get our player movement because what we've done, we have set our vector free we have assigned our floats, but we haven't actually moved the position of the player in any way. And this is where our rigid body comes in. But because we're going to be handling physics, we need to do this in our fixed update. So I'm going to type in void fixed update. I'm going to get rid of the private here. And I'm going to do RB, so referencing our rigid body, dot add false. And I'm going to type in move. I'm going to normalize it. So we have a magnitude of one. I'm going to multiply this by our speed. So it is dependent on the variable we set in the inspector. And then I'm going to set the false mode 
to acceleration. So it's not an impulse of speed, but it's also ignoring the mass of our game object. It's just one less problem for us to worry about. So now back in the inspector, if we go to our movement component, we have some variables here. So initially I'm gonna set the speed to something like 50. I'll set our jump to 10. And then for our orientation, I'm gonna drag in this orientation game object. And now if I press play, we can indeed move around. But at the moment, as you can see, the movement is very, very slippery and that is not what we want. So to counteract this, if we go onto our player here, we can actually increase the drag of the rigid body to something like four. I'm gonna set the interpolation to interpolate, set the collision detection to continuous. Now, if we press play again, the movement is a lot sharper. Of course, it is still just a little bit slippery, but of course you can increase the drag. But at the same time, you would need to increase the speed of our player to counterbalance that drag, but it would remove any more of the slipperiness. But for me, this is pretty fine. So at the moment, we've got some movement, we've got some camera rotation, but we don't have jumping. So that is what we're going to do next. So back in our movement script, I'm going to go down to our update function. I'm going to do an if statement. I'm going to do if input dot get key down. I'm going to use key code dot space. Now, of course, you can set this to anything you want. So now every time we press space, I'm going to create a new function called a jumping open and close curly bracket. And I'm going to make this down at the bottom. So I'm going to do public void jumping. And what we're going to do here is RV dot add false. So we're going to add another false. I'm going to use transform dot up. I'm going to multiply this by our jump so we can control it in the inspector. And I'm going to set the false mode to impulse. And just before we finish this off, I'm going to set the velocity of our rigid body. So I'm going to make a new vector free, and then I'm going to use the velocity on the X axis for the X. I'm going to set the Y to zero, and then I'm going to use the velocity for the Z on the Z axis. Essentially what we're doing here is just setting the velocity on the Y axis to zero. So no matter what speed we are falling at, we will always jump with the same amount of force. So now if we hit play here and I press space, you can see that we do in fact jump. But you may notice there is one problem. The jump is really floaty. And now there is multiple ways that we can handle this. But the way I like to do it is by adding a constant downward force when we are in the air and having that downward force increase while we are in the air. So if we jump off the platform like this, we will start off slow, but then we will slowly drop harder and harder the way gravity would. So before we do this, we need to make an is grounded function to check if the player is touching the floor. So we're going to do this through ray casting. So what I'm going to do here at the bottom, I'm going to create a new public ball in a function. So I'm going to go public ball is grounded. And inside this, we're going to make a ray cast hit. I'm going to call this hit. Now we're going to check for if physics dot ray cast and inside this ray cast, we're going to start it at the transform position. The direction will be down. So vector three dot down. The hit will be the hit we just made. So I'm going to type in out hit. The distance of the ray cast will be 1.5 F standard for float. And finally, I'm going to type in ground here. And that's because I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to type in public layer mask and then ground. And we will assign this in the inspector when we go back into unity. So now we need to open and close some curly brackets. And if this hits, we need to return this Boolean as true. And if it doesn't, so we type in else, it will be false. And that is all we need for our physics. So essentially we're sending out a ray cast point from the position of the player directly downwards at a distance of 1.5 unity meters, units, however you want to call it. And if it hits any object that has the ground layer mask on it, then it will return true, meaning the player is grounded and otherwise we are in the air. So now with this Boolean that we've just made, we can add it to our jump in if statement. So we can check if we press space and the player is grounded, don't forget these curly brackets here because it's a function, then we can jump. Otherwise, if we press space but we're in the air, we can't jump. So now we can finally get on to adding the downwards force. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna create two floats. I'm gonna call them public, float downward false and then another one called public float downward multiplier so now in the update function i'm going to check if our player is just grounded then we set the downward false to zero and if the player is in the air we're going to set the downward false plus equal to time dot delta time so if we just left this alone right now this downwards force, anytime we're in the air, it would go up in seconds, as that is what time that delta time is. It's just seconds since the game has started. So downwards force could, would go one, two, three over time. But if we multiply this by our downward multiplier float, 
that means we can control it in the editor. So if we were to set the multiplier to 20, we would still go up in seconds, but it would be multiplied by 20. So it would go way quicker, meaning we would move down and we would go faster and faster much quicker. So this just means we can control it more in the editor. And now underneath this, I'm gonna add a new false. So rb.add false. We're gonna set minus transform dot up. So essentially transform dot down. That is how we handle that. We're gonna multiply this by our downward false, and then we're gonna set the false mode to acceleration. So again, to summarize, if we are grounded, the downwards false is set to zero. And if we jump or we fall off a platform, we will be setting downwards false ever increasing as a value. And if we set this downwards multiplier to 10, it will increase quicker. And then we are just gonna factor in this downwards false into a new false that we are applying to our player. So it essentially acts as a custom gravity. So now on our player, we can set our downwards multiplier to something like 10. This is a number that I've been playing with. Now we need to click on our ground game object here. So I'm gonna select it in the editor. I'm gonna to go to layer and I'm gonna press add layer. I'm gonna to go to user layer six. And I'm gonna type in ground with a capital G. Now I can go back to our ground, go to layer, add ground. And finally, if we go to our player, you can see we've got this layer mask object here and I need to set it from nothing to ground. And now if we hit play, you can see if I jump, you can see there is a much quicker jump. And if I was to jump off the edge here, you can see that I increase in speed and it gets quicker and quicker and it is very realistic. But if I was to land on a platform that has the ground layer mask, that downwards force would instantly be set right back to zero and it would reset in the way gravity would. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I know it was a bit of a jam packed one, but hopefully it gave you all the information you need to make a first person controller. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video as I've got more coming soon. Guys, I'll oh, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.